Hi, I'm Sleazy D. Make of the first acid track. I've lost control. Happy to be here today. Oh, I'm, I'm Marshall Jefferson from Chicago. I've known this guy 42 years. <laughs> I produced his first song, I've Lost Control. Oh, yeah. I've done Jungle Ones, uh, Time Marches On in the Jungle. I've done Kim Mazel. Oh, well, oh, well, yeah. Kim <laughs> we'll do it. We just have to do it, okay? Yeah. Uh, and uh, CC Rogers, Someday, Ten City, That's the Way Love Is, Ooh. Emotion, uh, Dusty Springfield, uh, The Tom Tom Club, Tom Jones, Paris Brightledge, and I, I can't remember anymore. Oh, The Truth, what? Open Our open our Eyes, uh, yeah. It might be easier to ask who he didn't work with. <laughs> I work with a lot of people. Yes. So, um, so I'd like to just ask a question about the style of counter-control and what was the genesis of that? Well, with us, uh, <laughs> we didn't care about styles much. No. We, we pretty much let everybody else name it, name the style and tell us uh, what it was, you know. So we, I, I had one song uh, called Four Different Genres. You know, so like, uh, I just felt, always found it amusing that people wanted to name genres. I just, uh, me and him, this guy, uh, we, we were really into rock and roll, like Led Zeppelin, Black Pink Sabbath. Floyd. Van Halen. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, we would go to rock concerts and stuff like that. And that, that was, well, that was kind of before we discovered, uh, that's before our, our, our hormones ignited. <laughs> then we to say the least. dancing, you know, because, uh, you know, the girls danced. And, and when we try to describe our genre, I got into music because I just love to dance. That's what it was. So I didn't make I've lost control thinking oh, I'm going to make something new or start a new genre or anything. No, we just tried to make something that would move the dance floor. Something I wanted to dance to. And that's why I'm Actually, watching. Actually, he just up. came down in my basement and he started <laughs> dancing to something I was playing. And then we made I've lost control. Yeah, after and I got the 808. Yeah, we had the... Damn! <laughs> <laughs> we, we had a... Uh, uh, this 808 drum machine, a TV 303, and we didn't we didn't know how to work the TV 303. So, but you know, we had something come out of it sounded really weird. But coming from a rock background, we thought that's kind of cool, you know. Do it again. So, yeah, do it again. Do it again you know? <laughs> yeah. So, that, so, you know, that's how we that's how we came up with that sound. Did did funk James Brown or that funky underground sound? Have, did that? We avoided you funk. Too. We have, in Chicago we avoided funk because that brought out the gangsters. We were we were anti-gangster. Uh, there was a lot of crime in Chicago. We we just you know the promoters decided that we couldn't have funk at the parties because that would bring the gangsters. So we we were. Uh, we embraced uh, the music that was playing at the gay clubs, uh, European music, you know, uh, alternate, alternate music, uh, you know, anything. Off Limits was Parliament Funkadelic, James Brown, James Brown, all the funk stuff, right? We couldn't do it because uh, that would bring out the gangsters. The gangsters would come to the parties and start shooting. <laughs> Gang bangers, right. as we say in Chicago. So, to this day, you have a house party. You don't even need security. Chose a few picnics. 60,000, 60 to 100,000 people, no security. And you, you're not worried about any violence whatsoever. Hip hop party? Or R&B party? You got metal <laughs> detectors at the doors, pat downs, ID checks. And there's still somebody sneaks a gun in and shoots up the club, you know. So that you know, that's the difference. That's what we we detest uh, for the most part. Uh, lo uh, for decades, we detested rap and hip hop in Chicago for that reason because it brought out the violence. And when he says that's important, you realize James Brown, Mr. James Brown, Parliament. I love their music. 
I love but, the music too. But you, you didn't want to have yeah. exactly. You didn't want to have that at the party. Yeah. So house music, like when we first started out, when I was in high school, uh, back in the mm-hmm. very early eighties, eighty two, things like uh, punk rock, B fifty twos, Gary Newman, all kinds. Of, okay, uh, uh, Trans Europe Express. All these records were being played, but they weren't being played by the gangbangers. They wanted to hear the. James Brown, I, I Parliament, like, Rick James, everything. I listen to it at home, but not go to party to it. Couldn't party to it. I liked, I liked ABC. I liked, uh, yeah. you know, Blondie. Uh, <laughs> you know, liked a lot of the new wave stuff. Exactly. Visage, Frequency 7. Remember that? Ooh. You know, a lot of, a lot of European, a lot of European music. And then, Susie Q, you're so sleazy. I wonder why I like that one. <laughs> Is that where you got your name from? No, I no, didn't. No, he got his name. <laughs> And let me We're clear. Not, not gonna talk about how he. Yes, got let's it. talk about how I got no, my name. No, 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 But I want to clarify one thing. My name is spelled S L E E Z Y. Z Y out here. Hey, Z. You say Z, I say Z. Sleazy, and it's not easy to be sleazy and still be loved. That's the problem. So, I make it happen. So, can I make the assumption that the the rare groove scene, ironically, although it was like the most danceable music for expression yes actually house music was almost like a counter movement yes and could i therefore make the assumption that it wasn't a counter movement a rare group no to the to the to the culture that it was that the the funk music was bringing out funk music had a funk music had a different culture in the uk than it had in the states yes it did because it wasn't but there was wasn't the vi- violence linked to rare groove in the UK like it was in the States. States, you have a, a, a for one thing, they didn't call it rare groove, but right. in the States, if you had a funk or anything like that playing at a party, it was gonna be shooting in Chicago. You know, it, no question about it. You did not want it at your party. UK, you have one, a rare group, one, one two, party. One, two, you got, one, you two, got two, white six. people there, you know, you got all kinds. Right. All colors of queens there. It's fine. That's a per- that's a fine. That's a great party. I would party there. Definitely. I would love to. I mean, I really right. went to a couple yeah, of red room parties in the, the in, in, uh, in in the UK. Nice. Man, they were nice. jamming. You know, I heard some stuff like Charles Erlin and Ooh. and oh man, and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. and, uh, it was everything. Right. Awesome. Right. You couldn't do that in Chicago. No. So, no. No. So, so you created house music, or you created this, you know, this music, which right. later became house music. Term yes. house music, yes. And, you know, it was, as I read, it was about human space, like, for gay people. So, just going to do that? Thank you. It's alright. No, 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 the other way for continuity. Yeah, it's gotta be it's gonna be front ways. It just needs to be you gotta see your face. Your pretty face. That's it. Yeah. You reminded me now I'm self-conscious. You're cool, man, you're cool. So yeah, so the house was giving self-expression to these different groups as opposed to just a black white. No, I never had that. Well see here's the one thing though. It was never made, the music was made to empower any certain group. It was made to dance, to bring all groups together. There was no black, there was no white, no gay. What it was about was the fact that we came here to dance, to party, to leave all inhibitions at the door, to enjoy a night free from any problems. And house music still does that today. That's what I love about it so much. You can be yourself, no matter who you are. And it embraces all cultures. That's what I feel about house music. Okay, I've got two questions. The first one is, this is called The Untold Story. Okay. A rare group, but it also will tell the history of some house music as well. Okay. Could you tell us an untold story that's never been told? <laughs> it's a big revelation. Something that you've kept under wraps for a long time that can now be told. Or maybe props to somebody who never got props at the time. Hmm. Uh, in rare group. No. In house. If, it, if you can relate it to Red Group, good, but if it's to do with the house music scene, we want that story as well. Well, like I was talking about before, we were here on the very first house music tour in Europe in 1987, and we were okay. playing in London, and somebody was, uh, somebody recommended the Wag Club to us. And I went there and I saw this DJ named Derek Bowen. You know, 
And I'm wondering if you I mean, the music then, no, no, for another no, five no, minutes. No. So it's really, because that's going to be, I think it will be okay, but it, it would be better to... Uh, right. Is that James? That's Byron. Oh, okay. James, who? <laughs> Never mind. If we if we can't do it, would we, would you mind moving to the corridor, or close the door, and just do another five minutes? Okay. Because there are two question, two key questions I want to ask. Okay. One is the untold story or untold stories, right? Great. Great. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very first house music tour of Europe. We finished playing. Could you start off with the question, which is, you know, one of the untold stories I'd love to tell is, then it puts it in context. <laughs> one of the one of the untold stories I'd love to tell is uh, first house music tour of Europe in 1987. We just finished playing. We just finished playing at the Hippodrome, which okay. was, you know, one of the first gigs. It, it was empty and stuff. Huge, gigantic place, and kind of empty. You know? So you know, they, they said, "Well, you guys want to go somewhere? Yeah, we want to go out. What's a good club? Got to go to the Wag. Got to go to the Wag. DJ named Derek Bowling was playing there. Played everything on one dance floor, even house, right? And oh man, it was one of the best sets I've ever heard. I mean, mm. every song was a jam. You know, and, then, and he like mixed funk and all, you know, which we didn't hear much because we were, right. uh, reasons I stated earlier, we didn't listen to funk in Chicago at parties. Right? But he had it playing. It was blast. He was mixing that with jazz. He was mixing it with, with with house. He was playing everything on one dance floor, man. He ripped it. Up, man. So there like, you go. props to Derek Bowling. Derek, he became later known as Derek B. But uh, you, you know, uh, he was uh, DJ's DJ. He excellent set. Did you notice any similarity between the types of people who went to the wine mm. and the types of people who went to your house parties? Oh yeah, same type of person. You know, not non-violent and stuff. Kind of. You you, know, again, could you start the... Um, start the, by saying one of the things that I noticed, for example, is the similarity between the people who were at our party in London. Uh, what, you were saying that, yeah. One of the similarities between the WAGS uh, crowd uh, and the US crowd, I compare the WAGS crowd to kind of an upscale power plant club. Uh, ah. Crowd, you know, that kind of crowd. You know what I'm talking about? I definitely do. The, the, uh, kind of stylish you know but but dressed to dance you know what I mean so how would you describe that I mean the, 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 the power plant club very similar crowds you know the hip kids you know that would be the best way I could put it the hip kids because that's what yeah. the power plant was everybody didn't even know about it it was like you know the best kept secret uh, like Marshall said a lot of our clubs that played the house music they discouraged the riff raff just by what they played but the really cool people knew to come there that's the best way i can put it to describe it that was the that was what frankie played he played the best underground music that's what All Derek Bolin played was the best underground music there you go you know it was Susan, an underground vibe could you tell I us wonder. your your untold story something that's never been told <laughs> well first for me I, I know my <laughs> <laughs> well to tell you the truth my untold story that's never really gotten out. Few people already know about it, but here's the secret. I'm curious about this. Yeah. Back when house first started, when we first started calling house house music, uh, before it was even a genre, we would say, oh, that's Deep House. Deep House was started by Frankie Knuckles playing 70s disco. And that's what we call Deep House. And people now try to just make it so much, oh, you gotta make Deep House this way, that way. No, it was those 70s. Cuts. It was things like uh, Let No Man Put Us Under. It was things like By the Grace of God. It was those old 70s disco tunes that really brought us to the floor. He and played Walk the Night by the Scat Brothers too though. Yes he did, but the, the old school deep, when we say old school deep house, it's got to be those 70s tunes. Uh, that's, that's what really takes me back. And it's what still moves the sleeves today. If I go to a party here, the old school 70s cuts, which Marshall will not play anymore, and I'm not mad I'll at it. I know you do every once in a while. I got a rip when I can. It depends on the 
crowd. Depends on the crowd. It's like some some exactly. crowds you go to, you see the you see everybody in there is over fifty. Mm-hmm. They, th- they ain't thinking about anything new. They want to hear that that, that old school seventies disco, man. But if you go to Chicago and you find the old school house heads, as they call themselves now. If you put on that old school stuff, and I came to a party here in 17 while I was over here, and they called it 70s Disco Night here. And I was like, 70s Disco? And I got to like, oh, you mean old school house. Gotcha. So that's an untold secret, I would say. But that's what I would say was good one. Right, I've got another question. Could you bring to life for the program the first experience of you two guys in the basement? I want you to walk through the day. I want you to bring this when you just paint the picture of the day, the machines, you've already touched upon it, mm-hmm. but I want you to really bring it alive for the viewers about how this piece of music came into being, right? Because this is going to be the record of that day. So transport yourself. I got a good one. I, I can't. Transport yourself back to that day. Okay. Marshall knows his side of the story, but for me, on the first day we started making music together, when we made I've Lost Control, Remember now, this is back when I was still young and very, very wild. I came straight from a club, from the power plant, Frankie Knuckles. The party started at 12 midnight, would end 12 the next day. I usually leave around 10 or 11 o'clock. And I come over to Marshall's. He's done his night at the post office. He's just waking up. I'm like, Marshall, we got to make music. And I was, I was there. I was gone out of my mind. The music was still ringing in my ears. And Marshall's got this brand new machine down there. Please, check how this works. And he starts playing with those 808 drums. I was like, but wait a minute, where do we put more drums in? What about some claps? So I started getting claps. He's like, well, yeah, that was cool. No, more claps. And I'm like, more snaps, more cowbells, more everything. And I just got more and more excited. Marshall had to almost calm me down. And he's like, what are we going to call this? I was like, what will we call it? He looked at me and said, I've lost control. <laughs> and that's where that famous scream that Marshall does comes from. He looked at me and said, ah! <laughs> That was a night. And that's how we really got started. And it was so much fun. We didn't do it that day to make money or to become famous. We were having a ball. And I was making something I wanted to dance to. And a month later, after we took the reel and reel to Ron Hardy, the first person we took that track to, I was out in the club dancing. I was like, that's a jam. That's a jam. That's me. (laughs) I had to go up and introduce myself. He's like, I've been looking for you. I said, that's me and Marshall. And the rest is history, as they say. It's a great start. Can we get your start. side of the story now? Yeah, let's get your side. I'll let him tell it. He's oh, no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Sounds more exciting when he tells it. Marshall was a calming force for me because I was really out of control. That's why I named it that. I used to take some uh, mood-altering substances. We'll just put it that way. And it was a, it, no, it, that was rock, rock influence. That was that, that was a rock influence, I believe. That was uh, that was. A little Van Halen in that. What would you say? Uh, yeah, yeah. Everybody wants some. Uh, no drums. But when I was doing my vocal, I've lost control. I was in a Pink Floyd mode. <laughs> yeah. We had a lot of fun. Though. That's the most thing I remember. We started doing it for fun. And that's why it came out so well. And that's why he's still doing it the way he's doing it right now. In fact, a bostage. Standing in Burnett every day for all my life. Needs to do it and I need it. It's the only thing I want. Just rush. 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 Yeah. I'm very hyper if you didn't notice. I'm so. thinking about the I've lost control. Oh, yeah. I've got, I've got another question, mm-hmm. which is... Um, House music's going to go on after we've left this planet. It's I'm not on. ever leaving. No. <laughs> after we've left the planet, obviously your legacy and your music lives on and the positive message. Let this, uh, let this documentary be a testament to your message. So what I want you to do is I want you to give your everlasting message of what the music means to you and what you hope it means to the generations to come. <laughs> Uh, house music to me is the best underground dance music. It could be it could be rare groove. It could be jazz. It could be house. It, but it could be disco. But it's the best underground dance music. And when you think of it like that, 
it's genreless, you know, it's whatever moves people on the dance floor, and it's underground. For instance, you know, you say, you say something like, uh, Larry Heard, Mr. Fingers, uh, can you feel it, right? That's house.